Greetings strangers, Jerams Gaming here. Welcome to another installment of the Beginner's Guide series. Today we'll be going over the pros and cons of the Double Swing Barbarian, where to put your attributes, some of the best in slot starter items, and an overview showcasing the talents at the end of this video. So stay tuned. If you haven't heard by now, I live stream each week, Friday through Sunday between 4 and 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on your favorite streaming site. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a content release. Check out our community discord, all of the links are in the description down below. And without further ado, let's return to your scheduled program. So let's go over the pros and cons. What's great about this build is that it's very easy to play and level through normal. There's also plenty of item variation, so if you don't get exactly what I have here for the best in slot, it doesn't really matter too much. As well as it is a fast paced play style as the Barbarian usually is. Some of the things you should be aware of is that it is weak against range attacks and spells. And because we're not a sorceress, we will have low mobility until we get that staff of teleportation. Now let's talk a little bit about the attributes. As always, you will want to put points into strength until you can wear all of your gear. Put a few points into dexterity if you are struggling to hit monsters. And lastly, put the rest into vitality. Now as far as synergizing with this particular build, I feel like Blessed Aim and the Might Mercenary from Act 2 actually work really, really well. With the close third is the Holy Freeze Mercenary. And then maybe you can think about trying different ones as you get a little bit farther into the mid game with Act 5 Mercenaries. So just like the other Mercenaries we've gone through, we uh, are working with the Worm Skull Bone Helm, the Insight Pull on Rune Word, as well as the Smoke Rune Word for the armor. And this will allow your mercenary to have its life leech as well as having max resistances even going into your nightmare modes. As well as having that sweet meditation aura just in case you need that for when you are swinging for long periods of time. Now let's talk about your character's inventory. One thing you do need to keep in mind with the Diablo 2 Resurrection uh, random number generator when it comes to gear and runes, anything can happen in this game. So this is just a possibility of getting all these really great items moving into the later parts of normal but also you should understand that anything can happen in this game so you could get some of these items or even none of these items however your build should not suffer if you don't have the perfect best in slot for this build i went with the staff teleportation that way if you can't get over certain things with your leap you can use teleportation to get over moats and rivers and things like that prevent you from walking excessively to other places on the main hand i went with the black rune word offhand i went with the malice rune Rune word, the lore rune word in the helm, as well as the hustle rune word in the chess piece. As far as amulet and rings go, I went with the angelic wings uh, as well as the angelic halos to increase my attack rating so I can hit more often. The venom grip demon hide gloves, the arctic binding so I can get that a boost of cold resists. I went with the goblin toe plated boots, however I would probably encourage you to do the infernal strides instead because they will help to cap out your fire resist moving into the mid game. Other alternatives you can think about is your Cathin Sigil and Seals, the Eye of Etlich Amulet, as well as Manald Healing Rings, Saigon's Belt Wrap, the Rhyme Shield, which will give you Cannot Be Frozen, as well as the Smoke Rune Word in the armor for additional resistances, as well as your normal magic finding items when you want to look for better loot, the Gold Wrap Heavy Belt, Chance Guards Chain Gloves, and Dual Nagel Rings. You could also consider running Spirit Rune word swords however i think that the other weapons will be a lot better because of the fact that it'll give you more chances of hitting with that crushing blow and open wounds which gives you more damage now let's talk a little bit about where you should put your points in the skill tree on the war cries section i decided to put one hit wonders into howl shout battle orders and battle command in addition to having one point into finding potion and find item. This will also give you a little bit of an introduction into the magic finding barb. On combat masteries, I went ahead and maxed out mace mastery to increase my attack rating and damage and critical strike when it comes with swinging those maces around. One point into increased stamina, increased speed, iron skin, as well as natural resistances. Over on the combat skills, I went ahead and put one point into leap to help with that mobility, one point into bash, which is the requirement to bring you down to double swing, and then put 20 base points into double swing. So now we got those things out of the way, let's head out into the world so I can actually show you how these skills work in our skill overview. 
So we're actually going to do three different shouts to buff up. The first one is called Battle Command, which increases all current skill levels for you and your party for a short duration of time. After that, we will use Shout to increase our defenses and rating of my, me and my party. Next, we will do Shout, which warns of impending danger and improves the defense rating of you and your party. And lastly, we're going to do Battle Orders, which improves the maximum mana, life, and stamina of you and your party. And what's great is that this actually affects your mercenary as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll cast those up. And as you can see, that increases our health and increases our attack reading as well as our defenses. Next thing I'm going to show you is leap. Now, this is just kind of something that will help you in some instances when you need to get over some short areas. However, on your switch, we're going to use our staff of teleportation, which will allow us to teleport over longer distances to get over larger rivers and moats so that you can continue to move and progress through the game without too much hindrance. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is find item or find potion. Now, if you use this on a corpse of a slain monster, it gives you a chance to find a potion. And the other one is use this on a corpse of a slain monster to find hidden treasures. Now, whether you're looking for more potions or if you're looking for more opportunities to find better items, either way, this is a really great opportunity to help you out along the way. And now for your main attack, which is double swing. When two weapons are equipped, attacks two targets if possible, or one target twice. So basically it does more damage on one single target as well as it splits the damage among multiple targets. So it's kind of similar to Zeal, but it's the barbarian version of it. So as I come in here and I lock in, as you can see, it swings much, much faster than some of the other abilities on the barbarian and it takes out guys very, very quickly. So let's walk out of Harrogath and let's uh, hit some enemies really quick. Go ahead and we'll buff up. Make sure Mr. Jamali Tamale gets a little bit of that as well. We can come in here and we can just mow stuff down. Now, as you can see, this is actually pretty small areas here that you can leap over, which is really nice. It allows you to use leap um, so you don't have to walk around. It's a little bit less walking, which is super helpful. Um, and it just allows you to be a little bit, uh, have a little bit more movement ability. Um, of course, with there's larger places that you want to get past or through. If you wanted to get through this area, you can switch over to your staff of teleportation and you can go a little bit farther and not have to worry about uh, the distance issues that you have with leap. But as you can see with this particular build, we're just mowing stuff down. It's actually pretty good. It's a really fast place. It's a lot of fun with that hustle and you're stacked up with um, your movement speed passives. You can see uh, we actually move around fairly quickly, uh, which is really, really nice. And as you get uh, higher levels and more skills, you'll actually be able to move even faster. As well as uh, once you do get that Enigma, you can teleport all over the place without too much trouble at all. So in conclusion, this is actually one of my most favorite builds on the Barbarian to start a new ladder character with or a new character in general. It's a lot of fun to play. It's really quick. It's easy. It's simple. It's not something you have to be very complicated about. Um, the thing is that early game leveling is going to probably be your best. Get to the point where you want to move around and you want to get into the higher parts of the game, you're gonna have to respect to probably either Berserk or Whirlwind, maybe even concentrate, uh, depending on what direction you wanna go. However, it's a really fun build and it's actually really reminiscent of the Zill ability from the Paladin. And you don't have to worry too much about switching targets or changing targets. You can just click and hold and it's just going to go and do everything it needs to do. So thank you once again, champions, for watching to the end of this video. It does help in the battle against the almighty algorithms. If you feel like my content was worth the watch, then consider subscribing to my channel. And lastly, leaving a comment with some feedback on how much you enjoyed it or even how I can make these videos even better for all new players to enjoy. Are you ready to play? Let's play!